What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Life Eater Show, where we help people make more, work less, and create lives and businesses they love. I am your host, Jason Wojo. I'm joined by my co-host, Polish Peter. What's up, bro? Hey, man. I'm just excited that you're finally getting smart and inviting people with some really cool names on well, the show. Well, you know, and yeah, so Peter's alluding to we have Coach Pete uh, on the line, and I, I, I'm, I'm wondering if you guys are going to have an all-out brawl here. Like, is he gonna, is, who's the dominant Peter here? Hey, well, I mean, it's just a different way they're looking at it. You know what I mean? But uh, I think we're going to keep I mean, you're up. Polish Pete. He's Coach Pete. I mean, we'll, we'll, you know, there, there can be two. It's okay. Well, and so listen, man. So so I've had the the, uh, the chance to get to know Pete for, gosh, I've probably known him for maybe six years now or so. Um, and somewhere in that neighborhood. And we're introduced by a mutual friend. Uh, here's a guy that knows how to self-promote. Here's a guy that knows the value of marketing and getting in front of people. Now he has a financial services business, but what I'm excited for us to dive into this interview on is because, you know, I think a lot of things he's going to share in here are going to be valuable for any kind of business owner looking to expand their reach. Well, first, and I'm surprised that, you know, from six years that he still wants to be friends with you. I mean, that's just, I don't know, <laughs> but it is what it is. But listen, the serious side of things, guys, uh, I want you to listen to this episode whether or not you are thinking or want to do radio or TV or get out there, I think even some of the nuggets that he shares, because he shared some really cool little phrases that he learned, some life lessons and things like that. And just from that perspective, I think you can get a lot from this interview to be able to go and be successful in life and business. Yeah, absolutely, man. Let's dive into it right now. Here is our interview with Coach Pete. Coach P, what's up, man? Glad to catch up with you. Thanks for joining us. How you guys doing? Good, man. How about you? And by, by the way, we caught up just briefly uh, before we started recording. You're in Vegas now. You're in Carolinas. You're, I mean, you're just all over the place, man. I, could, I couldn't even keep up with you. It's a tough job. Somebody has to do it. <laughs> yeah, you're, well, you're doing a good job at it. Well, and so, so one of the things, you know, I, I've known you for, uh, for a few years now. We've had some mutual friends, and I've been amazed and uh, just bewildered by how much you are able to get yourself out there. And we've spoken a little bit, and I was actually on, on your radio show uh, quite a while ago, um, but you have pretty much what I would say mastered this art of media. Uh, you have s s managed to submerse yourself into this industry and get your brand, get your name, get your images and things out there. And I want to talk about that today. Like how can businesses uh, do this kind of thing? But before you go into that, give some people some context as how you got into it and, and where this is going for your business. Give you a little history. My dad's a college professor and he, he's like 43 years now at University of North Carolina at Pembroke. So I grew up around that kind of atmosphere. And he, what that meant is anytime dad wanted to do something back in the day, we loaded the car up and we had to go do it with him. So he had, there was a speaker coming one night. I was in fifth grade. And the speaker, I, I remember this still to this day, which did probably shaped my life, but the speaker was some kind of motivational guy, whatever, but he said, no one will toot your horn as loud as you will. Mm. That's why I do my, I mean, that since then I've been doing my own media because no one's going to get your story any better than from you. Mm. And if you depend on others to give it, if you ever play that game called telephone where they start on one end of the line, the teacher whispers uh, a sentence or, or something to one person, they pass it down the, the line. And by the time it comes out, it's different. Yeah, that's what me and Vojo do here on this podcast. <laughs> well, so if, if you just if you depend on somebody else to tell your story, do you think they're going to tell your story as good as you will? Oh, right, right. That's true, because there's no heart behind it, and there is no you know as much as yeah, I get it. Right. So I mean, even even when I've gone on CNBC and Fox Business, they get a pre quip about who I am, and they they don't really read that. They read the script a lot of times, but then you have to shape your story to them as well. So no one's going to know it as good as you, and that's why it's very important to. And another thing the guy said: there's two things. He said you if you educate, and that was funny because my dad was a college professor. He said if you educate, you'll get paid like an educator, and if you entertain, you'll get paid like a Hollywood star. So what do you think I've been trying to do all my life? Mm, mm. Entertain. Yeah, because there's a million and one. I'm in the financial industry, so there's a million and one people doing financial shows on on radio. So uh, and they all start spouting statistics and all that. Nobody really cares about stats. They don't mm. really care about what you know until they care about you. And how can you care about? How can you get them to care about you with humor? Humor works. Now, financial world is not anything to laugh at, but if you can mix humor in just right without too much humor and enough good financial information, you have a pretty good show. That's what we've been. I've, been, I've done it six, about 16 and a half years now. So it'll be 17 years in July of 2021 this year. On, wow, on, man. Yeah. And that's so how you. <laughs> so how do you help somebody who doesn't have much humor if I'm asking for Vojo? Yeah, like, well, <laughs> you, you got to get them to try to at least, at least be not quite as serious all the time. And that's what, <laughs> I think that's what the main, one of the problems here with society these days. Everyone's too serious. 
Right, yeah. right. And, uh, you know, I know you, Wojo BC, we call it. That's before COVID. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> I like that. Well, and so so you have done a phenomenal job at that, man. Like whether whether I'm seeing stuff on your Facebook page um, or, you know, whether it's your the your professional media outlets, um, you've really pre- presented yourself in a, in a way that is engaging and it's, and people I think really enjoy following you and they want to see what you're going to say and, and you make it, you know, educational. Yeah. But more so like, like you said, it's entertaining. Like it's, it's not just. Yeah. My term is unstuffy. (laughs) So you don't want (laughs) stuffy. If you're stuffy, no one's going to, I mean, who's going to want to watch or or listen to somebody who's stuffy or sounding like monotone, like Ferris Bueller's day off with a, what's that? Ben Stein. Bueller. Bueller. Nobody wants that. (laughs) <laughs> but my dad was entertaining. He still is entertaining teacher. He does uh, like experiment, like he's physics. So he does physics experiments in class instead of trying to teach out of a book. He shows. So okay. You know, telling is good, but you have to back up telling with showing. And if you can combine those together, uh, you get a whole lot more people paying attention. Got it. Got it. So, so you, you are clearly influenced this by a young age. So you've, you've basically indoctrinated this into your own, own being. What are some of the ways that you've found effective to spread this message? Because part of it is, is, is being entertaining, but part of it is like knowing how to reach people. Right. And you don't want to try to pounce on people too much. And that's why you've said you follow me on Facebook. I don't put too much stuff on there, but if I find something funny, I'll put it on there. If I, if I have a good quip of when I've been on like TV, I put that on there. I'm also a producer, an executive producer on some movies. I've got a new movie out now called the last blockbuster. And you remember blockbuster video. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the last scene of that movie. So if you, if you're in a movie, you want to be either the first scene or the last scene. If you get lost in the middle, no one sees you. <laughs> pro tip there for everybody that's gonna be in the movies but there's so, only one blockbuster left i mean there were nine thousand when i was young and now there's one it's in bend oregon so i mean that's just it's just one of the things that's out there uh peter diamandis i don't know if you know who, who he is but yeah. He's, mm-hmm. yeah spacex i mean he's one of the big guys there but everyone hears about elon musk and richard branson matter of fact richard branson turned peter diamandis down when he had the spacex idea <laughs> people don't know that but i i, I uh, won two emmys for that movie with peter and it's on amazon prime anyone can watch that called the visioneer there's another visioneer out there it's not it, it's a uh, it, there's two movies named visioneer so it has to be the one with peter diamandis okay so it's a good movie it's a really good movie to watch got it got he's it. a smart guy yeah he really is and he's, he's shorter than me so i feel good around people like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so i've got so, seven footer in my office i've got a seven foot guy oh called unc so I have to surround myself with shorter people so I feel tall every now and then. <laughs> yeah, man, I'd be walking on stilts every day. So that's how you look over, over the height. That's your requirement. That's your criteria. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter to me. You know, I, I say if someone's taller than me, I'll put my wallet down and stand on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> Great equalizer. <laughs> so, all right. So, tell me. So, you're. So, is radio and television the two, the two media channels that you're in now, or like, where are the, have you found those to be most effective for your for your business? Yeah, I've been in the financial industry since 1992, and so, and that's what 30 almost 30 years now and i've only been doing media for about 17 so there's yeah. 13 years there the lost years i used to do the dinner seminars that everybody tries to do and and, the, and it's bad positioning you know in in any kind of sales or any kind of marketing you you have to have good positioning and it goes from people knowing you know, like knowing you exist because you have a seminar at a steakhouse and they were coming to eat the steak they weren't coming to hear me but then uh, once i got on radio i established credibility which is good credibility is good but guess what's the most important thing you can establish Besides credibility, what's on what's on top of credibility? Uh, I don't know, is it like trust, <laughs> authority. Well, authority, authority. Trust, yeah, okay. yeah. because authority is, is like Dave Ramsey. You've heard of Dave Ramsey. Yeah, he tells people to do stuff. What do they do? They do it. They don't yeah. question him. They don't Google him. And so the secret in life here these days, as we are in the internet generation, is to do things that will keep you from being Google slapped. Do you know what Google slapped is? It's when you say a term on your uh, show or, or in a group setting and people, instead of coming to you for the information, go right to Google and Google what you said. Now you've been Google slapped and they have a million and one different options on Google. Mm-hmm. So what, how do you get around that? Well, see, because I do a radio show. How am I going to keep myself from being Google slapped? Well, before I do a show or we take the show a lot of times. So after I, if, I, if I invent a term on the show, I go get the domain. I go, go right to GoDaddy and buy the domain and then send it to my website. So if anyone Googles that, they're going to come right to me. So I'll slap them back. <laughs> clever man that's, yeah that's good and, sh- and everybody watching should should uh should at least get a domain with their own name okay if you ever yeah, get what's the name, domain name for this show get your name you know your name <laughs> polishpeter.com my name i mean what it what a big you know because if you get famous or whatever someone's going to get that name before you do it really right. stinks someone's a squad on your name but that happens mm, mm. so just another tip because i mean a lot of people forget to do that another another one is uh, take your phone number and and put a dot com at the end of it 
Oh, now that's you interesting. Now you go to the website. All they have to do is remember one number, and they go to their website and your phone number. Huh. So just little things I've learned over over the years, and that's again that keeps you from being uh, inconsequential because once they go to Google, you're dead. Man, that's that is a uh, super cool. And in that- the financial industry, it is, and you know, and then same if you're in the mortgage industry, same thing. Any kind of industry you're in, if you start spouting off terms that anyone can Google, then you're you're basically you haven't separated yourself from the crowd yet. Got it. Got yep. it. And so, okay, so you're learning to separate yourself here. And how, how did you make that transition into radio? Like that seems like a daunting thing. People don't even know how to get into that. And that yeah. was the first media you chose, right? Yeah, you usually need a catastrophic event to, to make a big change. And so I was doing a seminar at a chop house in Wilmington, North Carolina. And it's, it's expensive to do these. You had to pay for the uh, invitations, 10,000 invitations go out. And then you had to pay for the steak dinner. You had to pay for the room a lot of times. And during my seminar, I heard a commotion in the back. There were like 50 people in the room. There's a lot of people who had, had about $80 a head. So I'd already done the math and looking around the room, seeing how many, how many dinners I could have taken my wife to. <laughs> but it, the commotion was, it was a table of six people. Two people were invited, but then they called and said, can we bring our friends? They're just like us. They're interested in learning about money as well. So I said, sure. Well, during my seminar, about halfway through, they lit a birthday cake up with candles and were celebrating the birthday of that. So they basically used me to have a birthday dinner. So my, wow. my solution was driving in, you know, Wilmington to Raleigh's back then, probably about two and a half hours because Highway 40 was there. So on the way back, I said, I got to do something different. I'm not going to ever do another seminar. And so I was listening to the radio. I said, well, I've always liked to, I used to listen to a guy named Bruce Williams. He was called the answer, America's Answer Man back in the day. He's passed away now. My dad used to listen to him in the car. So I said, I'm going to try to do a radio show. And so I didn't know what I was doing. So I went down the radio station the next day and uh, got passed around. Nobody even had an edit that no one was doing financial shows back then. So they basically ripped me off. I didn't know what I was getting. I paid a whole lot of money for a, for a half hour spot and I didn't know any better. And I didn't know what I was doing on the radio either. So it took me about a year and a half to, to get better. And so when I do media consulting now with, with anybody, I, I financial industry, number one, but I've done it for real estate folks and for attorneys and, and uh, mortgage people. Other, and home improvement guys have consulted with me a little bit, but, but you, you basically have to, there's some, there's certain things you, sh- you shouldn't do on the radio, like talk too long, like I'm talking too long right now, but I, I, I tangent all over the place on the radio, but I always come back and get my points. So look at Rush Limbaugh just passed away. He, and they're, they're, they're having trouble. They're never going to be able to replace him, obviously, but they're having trouble filling that slot now, figuring out who's going to go there because there's plenty of people talking politics, but there aren't many people that I know of that entertain at the same time. So if you entertain again, so I started entertaining on the radio and it got a lot better and you don't want to give too much information away. Cause then again, they can Google you or the, or you gave them all the information. So you have to tease, but you also have to please at the same time. Got it. Well, you know, uh, and I've heard this said in, in the, in the, um, in some of the industry, educational entertainment, uh, venues that I've spoken and stuff, they've always said like, Hey, you know, if you're, for instance, if you're selling, uh, a ticket to an event, you, you give them the what, you give them enough to see how this can be- benefit them, but you yep. really can't give them all the information anyway until they until they reach out to you. And like, you can't, you're doing them a disservice to try to teach them everything because they'll never do anything with it. And well, so it sounds similar. Yeah, it's a phrase, drink it through a fire hose. If you give them too much information, you're not going to get any of it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, it's like the garden hose like we grew up on. Remember the garden hose? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the garden hose? Still remember that taste. <laughs> it was still yeah. alive. Rust. <laughs> Rust and bacteria. Rust and all that, you know, the, whatever the hose <laughs> takes to like back then, the hot water at the beginning, because when you were thirsty, you would drink anything back then. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you want. You want people thirsty for you. And basically, they'll come to, when you say enough stuff, they'll come, they'll do anything to come see you. If you, if right. you get them teased enough and, and your authority's high enough. And so, so if, for, would do you, so you think obviously that obviously radio still works really well for you. Uh, and this is something that other businesses could benefit from as well. You'd say, I think so. I mean, well, I mean, who, anybody who needs to get their word out, what's a good medium. And so when I started radio, I was told back then, you know, radio's dying. It'll never last. And here we are 17 years later and radio's getting better and better. Yeah. yeah Satellite yeah. radio was supposed to kill it, but people want more local news. They want more, I don't know. They want that's something they just get in their car. They don't have to pay for it. They turn the radio on. And, and the beauty of the radio is you want to be on the best station. Cause you know, when it, like you've dabbled in real estate before, I think, haven't you? Yep, yep. So what's the most important part about real estate? What location. Have you heard of yeah. Location, location, location. So if you're on a good station and you're on the weekends, that's when you, they usually sell the, the, the block time like that. Well, the people, and I found myself do this in the past too. You get in the car, you drive another road and subconsciously you never turn the station because it was on whatever station it was when you turned it off on Friday. Now you're on Saturday in the car and you start getting entertained by a show that's on. And so that's how, that's how people find you. Cause they're not going to run out to your car, their car when your show comes on it's, Oh, it's time for twisted to coach Pete. We run out to the car. 
that, that may happen now for some people, but it, but it didn't happen back then. You want to get them a surprise attack kind of thing. So you're there when they're in the car. Got it. So how does somebody like, I'll tell you, many people, myself included, don't know the first thing about getting on the radio, who I have to speak to, what does this cost? Like, what am I looking for? Like, can you give us some general recommendations for someone brand new? Yeah, well, I'll give you, I mean, I'll give you a website. It happens to be mine. <laughs> Broadcasting <laughs> Experts with an S, broadcastingexperts.com. There's some sample shows there. There's, uh, there's all sorts of advice on there. There's, uh, we also do podcasts because, I mean, if we do a radio show, if you do a radio show every single week and you don't put it every, you don't repurpose it, you're wasting a lot of time and you're wasting a lot of energy. So we take our shows and we turn them into podcasts. Then we take all the shows we do across the nation for the financial folks and we turn it into a 30 minute show with the greatest hits. And we have a narrator, it's called Financial Pizza. In 30 minutes or less, you get all the financial information you need every week. So people like finance and you're never going to forget financial pizza. Dude, where do you come <laughs> up with these ideas? Like, I, I mean, these are just like, yep. well, I've watched a lot of TV growing up. I wasn't supposed to, cause dad was a college professor. So that made me want to watch TV more. And so I got <laughs> ideas from like all the ads I see and TV shows. So it's, a, you know, I, I still watch reality shows cause it's fun to see that my life's not as bad as anybody else's. <laughs> if, if you're having a bad day, watch a reality show and you figure out maybe you didn't have such a bad day. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's all relative. So not my relatives. It's all relative. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, all right. So, so we got the, we got the, the, um, the website. We'll send people over there for sure. So you, now you also mentioned you transitioned to TV recently too. Yeah. yeah Are these, is this your own show? Or are you being a guest on other shows? Like, how does that work? Both. I've, I've dabbled uh, years ago, like 10 years ago, I started dabbling in TV. TV is expensive. And if you don't know what you're doing, it's tougher. And it's a lot tougher to, to pull off a 30 minute show because a lot of editing is done on an audio show, a radio show. I mean, you, if you're, you almost don't need any editing at all. And you can have your, you have your notes in front of you. Like, uh, you know, sometimes I do, I do on radio, but on TV, it's you and the camera. Yeah. And so like, I've been in a little room and I like here in Raleigh, go to Microtel, it's called, and CNBC wants me on and I have to go on. I go in this little room and I'm looking in the camera. I've got my earpiece in and I hear the host talking to me. And that's hard, man, because you're all alone in that room. So you have to pretend you're with them in the studio. A lot more, a lot easier when I've been in New York and on like in the studio with people but so you have to you have to basically fire yourself up and you have to you know not get nervous because when you're when when that when that red light goes on there's <laughs> millions of people watching and so same thing on radio but you, the, the secret is not to not to even like you you spoken public speaking not think about who, how many people are watching you and what you're saying to say it right right you can't and filter so, cuss words out <laughs> yeah yeah right <laughs> with live you have to be careful so Right. And so, all right. So, you, so, so you're doing TV, you're doing radio. How do you see kind of the evolution of the, like the following tech? I mean, is there anything that you see that you're going to have to kind of uh, adapt into as we kind of, as technology advances or are you, are you really just, Hey, this is, uh, this isn't going away. I'm sticking with, with what works. Like, what are your, Oh, okay, so you're doing phone stuff, mobile. That's one of these, everybody. Right. So we yeah. make sure that our, our audio can be played obviously on the, on the phone, but also our video is, compressed so it plays on uh, perfectly on any kind of mobile device, iPads, iPhones, Samsung, whatever, you know, those kind of things. So, because a lot of people make this mistake with their websites too, they don't optimize their website for mobile. And so when somebody goes to your website, which, which looks fine on your desktop computer, when they go on the phone, they can't read different things and it's slow. And, you know, you, you've probably seen that on some websites. So you got to put some money into to making sure you're keeping up with technology. I'm, I, I, I'm a futurist. So I like to look at what's going on in the future. I'm an angel investor in a lot of futurist kind of companies too, uh, like Smart Road Technology. Have you heard of that yet? No. It's a tangent, but it's, I think it's a real interesting one. What's the main problem? I don't have a battery car yet. Do you have a Tesla? I don't know. Why don't you have one? Well, well probably. I, I don't want to. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, it's, there's the charge stations. I'm not sure how frequently those things are placed around. I'm too impatient for a charge station. Like when I fill up, I want to like you know guys. Yeah, are you're like, gone. Oh, when we go on trips for like maybe five hours on the road, I don't want to stop. <laughs> you know, yeah. my daughter's saying she has to use the bathroom, so I, I do that for her. But I mean, can you can you imagine, you know, you make a five minute stop to get gas and food. What if you had to turn it into an hour or two hour stop to charge the battery? And so that's the reason I've never got one yet. Number one, I, I don't trust the cancer aspects of sitting on a big battery all day long. They tell mm. us it shouldn't be in our pocket. What if our what if our pocket is on that, a big battery? But uh, it's a charging. So. 300, 400 miles of fill up is not good for me. So what if there was a way where you could pay for a special toll road? Like it's, it'll be a toll, you have to pay to be on that part of the road. But the smart road technology has nanoparticles in the road that will charge your car as you go down the road. You never have to pull over. That's coming, by the way. So I, I would recommend you guys Google smart road technology and try to find some companies. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, uh, yeah, looking that up for sure, man. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, so, I just listened to Peter Diamandis' book, this uh, the future book, and some of the stuff he talks about in that it's coming, it just blows my mind. What about this? I mean, so when you build a house, you have to have a lot of closet space, don't you? For clothes. Not Vojo, he's got one shirt. <laughs> <laughs> three, three shirts. And you go to dry cleaners when you wear a suit or just special, like I have to dry clean these shirts I wear. But what if there was a way where you wouldn't need to have a closet anymore, you would have a special like box you'd step in and it would measure you each day. And then you'd go to your computer and select what kind of clothes you wanted to wear. You press a button when you wake up in the morning, it would have to print your, it would already print your clothes out. And at night when you're done, you take the clothes, throw it back in, it recycles that material and reprints new clothes. That's coming. Really? That's coming. That's bad. It's one of the things Peter was really happy with a couple of years ago when I was talking to him. He said, coach, you're not going to believe it. We're not going to need cars at all anymore because it'll be, you know, you've used Uber before or something like that. There'll be so many autonomous cars out there. When you're ready to go anywhere, you just press a button and the car pulls up. Mm -hmm. So you won't need the, I have a, th a three story building here and the town gives me a lot of grief. I didn't build the building, but I bought the building in 2014. Uh, it was built in 2005. There aren't enough parking spaces here. So they don't even let, I want to build on the third floor and they give me a lot of grief about how many, how many new parking spaces I'm going to try to have to add before they let me build on my third floor. Well, if there's no need for park anymore, that's going to, that problem's going to be out the window. So there's a lot of things that, that the, New technology is going to solve a lot of problems. One of the companies that I've done research on about the uh, the, the uh, battery, the self-charging road kind of stuff, the, the really big thing is VivaCore, V-I-V-K. You might want to look at it. It's really cheap right now because nobody knows about smart road technology yet. Hmm. Hmm. So, yeah. Man, well, I guess that's probably one of the fringe benefits of you being in this industry is you get to meet a lot of people and be exposed to a lot of different ideas and meet contacts and things like that. Um and did they get to meet you and get, get to know you through your media presence? Like, some is that did. how they became aware of you? Some, but then some, they, they, we met some other way, but then they, then they did research me or Google me and then they respected me more, I think. Right. Right. Some of my stuff. So, so, so one of the things that, that one of the themes that like, when I, when I hear you speak, I, I hear like dispersion. I hear, I hear you spreading yourself wherever people are so that they can find out more about you so that you can entertain them so they can understand, um, you know, what you're all about. And then if they decide they need your services, they will, uh, approach you when you're doing all these different media angles, are you, so you're not even really pitching your services or like, what are you, what kind of content are you providing people on the most part that they are attracting to for media you're talking about or yeah, funny? yeah I've, I've, I've got three different businesses, which is, which keep, I'm a Gemini, so I can do this kind of stuff, right? So I like to, I, I get bored with one thing, but the media is very fun. I use the media to get the financial clients, but yep. then also do a lot of business coaching because uh, a lot of the financial advisors have no idea how to run a business. Okay. Bad thing about it. Uh, they, they worry about every penny they spend, but if you can throw a dollar out the window and 10 flies back, when you want to throw a lot of dollars out the window, that's what, that's what media does for you if you do it right. So you yep. get, it's ROI. You got to have a good ROI or you're out of right. business. Right. And so I'm always amazed, and especially these days, when you are ready to pay at a store and they make you wait or they either have an attitude or something like that. When people are ready to pay, number one rule of retail, you take their money. <laughs> you know, if you've been in lines before, big lines. And so I was always against the self-checkout, but I kind of like the self-checkout now at Walmart because I can get in and out of there real quick without waiting in line a lot of times. Right, if right. You discount, though, if, you're doing, if you're doing their work, they should give you like a 5% discount. So, I know. Yeah, are they going to 1099 me for like yeah, running my own they stuff here? Employee, they have that one employee watch to make sure you're not uh, not ringing stuff up and all that. But I mean, uh, yeah, I worked as a cashier in college, so I, I know I know that works. So how did you, what, what specifically made you be attracted to, you know, radio and television versus running it? Because you don't have, a, I mean, you've written books. You've written yeah. books. Um, you don't have a podcast, I don't believe, do you? Yeah, yeah, we took well the financial pizza I told you about. Okay, so you, you so the repurposed content from the from the yeah. Well, I mean the the show is so good. Now we can whittle it down, but I think we a lot of times we just leave our whole hour show and turn it into podcast. Financial Safari, that's a podcast. Yep. com. We're on iTunes, iHeart, all the all the stuff that you know anywhere in those little devices in your house where you that are listening to you all the time. The what Alexa and the Google whatever. We're yeah. on those too. And then America's four hundred one k show is also a podcast, and it's America's without the apostrophe. You can't find it on the internet. The internet does not recognize apostrophe. So America's with an S, but without, without apostrophe. Four hundred one k show. So, so how does now? I'm just thinking, like you, you have your hands in so many different things. Should somebody that's starting out focus on one or two different outlets, and what would they? What, how do how do they choose which ones to go for? Got to start small. And so now, if you start with podcasts and you expect to get a whole lot of results, you're not. You know, there's millions and millions and millions of podcasts out there. The beauty of radio is there's only so many radio stations and there's only so many radio time slots. So mm -hmm. again, real estate, 
radio is like the beachfront property and podcast is uh, trail parks. Yeah, that's what it is, unfortunately. And I know some guys that make a lot of money in trail parks too, by the way, investing in trail parks. But I'm just saying, if you had a choice and you had all the money in the world, would you buy a beachfront property or a trailer in a trailer park? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and what, what, what can people expect to spend like on radio? Like what are some like... And I'll tell you why I recommend radio before podcasts and TV. A lot of guys jump into TV. Nobody knows who they are. So the beauty of the beauty of having radio, and I've been on radio for a while now, as we said, about 17 years, when people are turning the channels on the TV, they might recognize my voice or they say, I hear this guy on the radio. So then now the, I've already got the authority and credibility. So they, they stop turning. If they don't know who you are, guess what they're going to do? I've done this yeah. on the wheel. Just go right through it. Now, any now, every now and then, if I see a financial show on TV, I'll watch it just to see what's going on, see what, yeah. they, what they're like. So combination though, but radio, when you look at production to produce a good show, we charge, we used to charge $3,000 a month for, for a weekly show. Well, we did, we dropped that at 2000. Now that's professional. I've got a staff of 24 people. So we basically, we make you sound like you've been doing it forever. That's, that's a lot better than getting on there. Sound like a mom and pop with a, a like a microphone on your computer and that kind of thing. So you have to right. do it right. If you, here's another thing I learned and you probably heard this too. You never get a second chance to do what? First impression. Make a first impression. So yeah. you go on and you're a joke. Well, I got lucky because I was on a crappy station back when I first started and I shouldn't have been on station anyway. I didn't know any better. So no one ever heard me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, was doing a show, I was doing a crappy job, but no one heard me. So that's good. But no, what, if you're on a big station or you're on a station where people are listening and you, you flub all over the place, they're never going to listen to you again. Right, um, right. And the, and the stuttering and you knows and ahs and uhs, like uh, I was watching the highlights of a Senate where the Senate was going through one of the, uh, one of the guys for attorney general, I think this, and he was, he has, he said like 30 of us and us and us in like 30 seconds. They said he did like 300 of them in, in a, in this interview. That's crazy. So do you think anyone's listening to what he's saying anymore? They're listening, they're counting the us and us and ums. So, right. be careful with that. so it, it, but it is, it, it is a nervous reaction to want to fill that blank space with something, but mm -hmm. you better off taking a pause and then saying something. So when you're going to say, uh, or, uh, you know, that kind of thing, stop and then say something new. Don't say that stuff. No, it's hard to get people to not do that though. So people are looking at, okay. So they're looking at like 2000 ish a month for the product, but that doesn't include any radio time. Does it? That's just recordings. Uh, no, you get, you get what you pay for though. So, yeah. You yeah. Know, so if you have a, if you have a good story to tell, you want to make sure a lot of people listening, you get a radio station. That's, that's a lot of listeners around. We've got the big station here, one Oh six one in Raleigh. I don't know people are listening all over the nation, probably uh, not a gigantic station, but the biggest one in Raleigh, uh, Washington DC has W M A L. And that's like four grand a, an hour on a, on a weekend. But when we've worked with advisors there, they get about 25 leads every week. So 25 leads with people with a lot of money, very quickly, you overcome that $4,000 a, a week. So, so let's, on, if you're not selling, if you're selling something, you're not going to make much money, then you probably should never do radio. Well, and so that's what, I guess what I'm, what I'm hearing is you're kind of, you know, your numbers, your conversion rates. And if you have X number of leads, you can expect this number of customers with this number of customers, you can provide or expect this much of income or revenue. And then you kind of just reverse it. Hey, we'll be right back with our interview with Coach Pete. But before we do that, I want to let you know about something very special going on with Life in Air right now. We are giving away for free a copy, a digital copy of the Life in Air book. It's a best selling book, it's critically reviewed. People love this book. Uh, it's had major impacts in people's lives. Because it's, and by the way, it fits in well with our, with our conversation today, Peter, because it's told it's a story. It's entertaining. It's written as a fictional story. It's not some dry business book or self-improvement book, uh, but it's going to pull you in. It's going to, it's going to really get those wheels turning. And it'll also be something that you will be able to look back and, and reflect on your life because you're going to feel like you're that character in that book. You've read the book, Peter. What do you think? Yes. And I've been actually heard of reference to as the new kind of a think and grow rich book. And, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. and you can read it pretty quickly in a couple of nights. You can probably digest it. Yep. One thing that I love about this particular book that you doesn't matter what walk of life you are in, you can find yourself somewhere in this book. Yes. And that's absolutely. why this book is so impactful. So you're going to learn, you're going to be entertained, and it's going to make a huge difference in your life. And it's free. Go on over to lifeinner.com. You'll see a tab that says free book, and you can download your copy today. All right, let's get back to the interview. Now, so is it, a goal for you or for most people to make money off of their media, or is it just covering their client acquisition costs? Well, that's a, that's a good point because you basically have a credibility building machine that pays you. Cause I've, I've paid for PR agencies in the past six grand a month and they would get me like on a, a couple of radio interviews and maybe on CNBC, 
but I had no real verifiable ROI. But with a radio show, you're building your local credibility because people hear you. They really do. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed at how many people recognize who I am. I don't, I don't know them. But the, to me, I feel like I, no one knows me, so I can still do anything I want in town. But I, I you know, watch out what I do, I guess. But <laughs> people start to know you. They start to talk and all that. But, you know, people, people do hear you. And you really need to, to, to decide ahead of time. We always say we give it a year to break even. So if you don't have a, at least a year's worth of money put aside, emergency account like a you know the yellow bucket we call it the emergency account, you probably shouldn't be dabbling in this. It's 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 not for everybody. But it, but again, that's good because it, it's se- that's separation. You want separation in any business. You want to separate yourself from others. So if you can get up there above where everybody else is, they're saying it's too expensive. Oh, I can't do that. I don't know what I'm doing. I I don't know how I come up with content every week. That's tough. We we have show we we supply show notes to our guys every single week, gals across the nation because it's hard to figure out what you're going to talk about me I'll, I'll take one sentence and make a show around it but a lot of people can't do that <laughs> <laughs> right well and so uh, okay so these are these are golden nuggets for our audience that is listening like make sure you have a year's worth of expenses to put into this before you break even yep. or, or so but well, we, also we tell that, let me tell you we tell people that and it's again you want to set expectations low but if if i really believe that i would never recommend radio Okay. You get yeah. guys breaking even within two or three months, you know, because okay. the sales cycle is pretty small if you get a good client. We've had people hit like multi, multi millionaire clients because they heard them on the radio on their first show. Got it. But, so, yeah, but, I mean, it's somewhat unpredictable, yeah. I guess. Yeah, you know, well, it, life is unpredictable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and so yeah. would you recommend somebody, now what's the trade off here? If someone's starting off, they're probably not very good, like you experienced when you started. Do you recommend they hone their chops on a on a smaller on a smaller station on a on a less well known station and then upgrade or just go right in for the big boys like how do you think people should do that? Well, if they're do it yourself, if they're do it yourself or don't want to pay the coaching for the coaching and have the show done, I mean, you talk about turnkey program. I mean, I've got more than like three million dollars put into what I do downstairs in my. You, I don't know if you ever you haven't been by my studio lately. You ever Not know? recently, but yeah, before you had the studios, it was yeah. pretty amazing. Staff and everything we do, so if you try to do it yourself and try to do it right, it's going to cost you a whole lot more money than it would to pay someone two grand a month to get it done the right way. So, yeah. you know, it's a cost benefit analysis thing, but if you're, if you're going to do it yourself and again, if you're not sure if you're good or not, most people aren't, aren't good when they start, start doing a podcast. Yep. Do an audio podcast, not a video. Cause if you're doing a video, you're having to concentrate on looking on the screen. You can't really pretend you're doing a real radio show. So we, we do videotape my radio shows like Howard Stern, but yeah. That's because I know, well, you know, we know what we're doing now, but I would not recommend going on video podcasts to start your career. Start with audio. And again, you got to come up with a really cool name and, and uh, somehow you got to market it because people, people don't, you know, they're not really listening to many podcasts. Think about the podcasts you listen to. You probably listen to a yeah. few, but you don't, a you don't listen to a whole bunch of them. You're yeah. not adding new ones a lot of times. You get your favorites. And yep. even, even my favorites, I don't have enough time to listen to in a week a lot of times. That's right. That's right. So I have Dan Bongino is one of my favorite ones. So I always listen to Dan Bongino's show. So he's really, he's really good. He entertains and he's only an hour long. So again, that's pretty long for a podcast. Most podcasts you want to what five or 10 minutes, you have a fact of the week or a problem of the week. You got to come up with something that separates you from everybody else. They'll say, this is a financial hour. Well, no one wants to hear about that. You got to have a really good a draw to the, to the title. So the title does mean a lot. You okay. see, my, I've, I've written eight books and they all have funny titles and titles that draw people in. Yep. Yep. So that's what happens. And so what I'm hearing, I want to sort of summarize. Uh, we're almost out of time here. I want to summarize some of the things I heard. One is I heard number one, uh, set yourself apart, figure out a way to entertain people, make sure that you're drawing their attention. People, people don't want to be taught. They want to be entertained. And I love what your, what your dad told you about, or, or no, the, the, sorry, the gentleman told you about, yep. Yep. yeah, about the entertainment, uh, Hollywood versus a teacher salary. Right. Thanks. Well, mom, so my mom was a school teacher for 28 years. She got paid three times less than dad, who was a college professor, and dad worked three times less. So I started to see that already. You know, but yeah. dad said, I went to school for my PhD. That's why I deserved to be paid more, which he did. So mom had her master's, though, and she got paid three times less. So I said, well, I don't want to make what either one of them are making. I want to make more. So I want to entertain. How do I do that? Dabbled in movies a little bit. Movies, you can't make any money in movies. You, you know, I, I, I like doing them. They're fun to be around and meet a lot of cool people and see a lot of things that never would have seen before. But the only way to really get there is to have a plan, have a good, have a good idea and make sure the idea is something where you don't get Google slapped on. So you always want to get that domain name of anything you come up with before you start talking about it. And so you gave an awesome website earlier for people to learn more about that. But also I would encourage people to kind of just to follow you to see what you do as a model, as an example. So to maybe get some ideas as well for their own businesses, where can people do that? What are the best places to find you? 
Uh, one of the good sites we give out on the radio all the time is Pete's On Demand. So my name, Pete, OnDemand.com. And that's uh, a lot of content up there. So we give a lot of content away to people. And, and so the reciprocity kind of thing, if I give you something of value, then you're going to give me a little uh, your, something of value to you, which is your time. And so if you do it enough, people really start to appreciate it. If you're just teasing them on a website, but you never give them any information, they have to come in and get it all. That's going to make some, some people mad. And they're not going to trust you. So you got to build trust and authority. Like you said, trust, I say authority, credibility is first, then trust and authority. If you can do all that, it really starts to multiply. So financialsafari.com again is, is a good site to go listen to some of our radio shows. I think we have a TV. Sh- we had, we do a TV show runs in Wilmington, North Carolina and all, all three of the networks down there every single weekend. It's a lot of work to do a TV show. A lot of work, a lot more work than radio. Radio, I'd say, hey, I'm ready for the show. I'll get my guys together. We go turn the mics on and we do a show. And uh, TV, a lot different. We have we have a, a big staff down there. We even have drones and stuff. So we we haven't experimented doing a drone show. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's fun. You know, what you have to do is you have to have fun. And I know you have fun doing what you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, first time I met Polish Peter over there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, uh, I was- I just, fun too. The battle of Peter's here, like Coach Pete. I mean, I think you're going to take him out, man. I just come here to make fun of him, poke fun of him. That's all. That's my entertainment. Yeah. yeah. So you're from where? Where are you from? Michigan, you said. Yes, I am. Origin from Poland, but Michigan. Yeah. Oh, where in Michigan? About 30 minutes north of Detroit, area called Sterling Heights, Shelby Township. That's always interesting to see how people end up where they are. I was born in Delaware, guys. No kidding. I did not know that. <laughs> There's only another. I only know one other person from Delaware. <laughs> I don't like him too much. <laughs> well, yeah. hey man, this has been awesome, Coach. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I know our listeners have got a ton of value out of this. I can't wait for them to kind of follow you to see what you're doing. Like you're you're, you're just a really a, a good example of like how you can do all these different things and be successful with it. This is my office right here. You see this cigar humidifier back there? That's a big. That's a. Wall. It looks like a. It looks like a grandfather oh, clock. Yeah, that's a, that's a humidifier, and then that's, that's that's a that's a hockey game you always wanted to play in the in the uh, arcades. I just don't know about the fact that it's just Boston on there. I, I, I see. A, a, I, I'm a Bruin fan, and then I got the Hurricanes on the other side. So <laughs> I'm a Wings fan. So <laughs> yeah. So then I got a Segway thing right there. So, see, a, <laughs> the world's largest man cave in this place. Nice, so, nice. <laughs> come well, see. <laughs> sounds good. Thanks, man. We'll catch you soon. Take care, guys. Man, Pete is a sharp guy. I love his energy. And no doubt that comes across in his promotions too. And that's why people are drawn to the guy. Yeah. And I love how he says about the entertainment, right? You got to entertain people. Dude, and that's that what he said on this particular show. I, I mean, know he was entertaining, right? And I, I love what he said at the beginning about, hey, you want to you educate, you're going you're to be paid like a teacher. If you want to entertain, if you're going to entertain, you'll be, you'll be uh, compensated like a Hollywood star. Like that was, man, that's, that's valuable, right? Because so many of us, um, we're, we're in our businesses, we're trying to market ourselves. What can we, and I'd say a question we should look at is what can we do as business owners, as entrepreneurs, whether you're a real estate investor, whether it is, what can you do to entertain people to get their attention? Not just educate. I mean, it's great that you want to educate people as to why they should do business with you. But I think there's also a, another factor here, which is, you know, and this plays into probably people doing business with people they like, is it the more entertaining you are, the more they like to hear from you, the more they like to be around you, the more they like to, to find out what you're doing. And that all compounds to help uh, establish what he, you know, he referred to the credibility and authority to do business with you. Yeah. So when are you going to start doing that? When are you going to, I want to know which, which part <laughs> I'm wondering when, yeah. <laughs> well, I, but listen, I truly believe, because think about it when you're growing up, what are some of the things that you really love doing? You love listening to stories and especially when they're funny and those kinds of things. And if you think about it, the stories that we listen to when growing up are love, there is a humor in there and all that kind of stuff. So I truly believe that when you start to entertain people with what you're trying to teach them, all of a sudden they get engaged. All of a sudden they start listening to you a lot more and they want to follow you because people like there's something about it gets you drawn to it. You know what I mean? You really want to yeah. find out more. Well, you know, and he's so, and I also love that. So he has the energy, he has the charisma and this is, you know, yes, I believe some people are kind of born with that, but I also think it's something you can, you can evolve and you can develop, uh, you know, and, and the, if you're somebody who's an introvert, that doesn't mean that you can't entertain. That doesn't mean that you can't develop these skills. Uh, Peter, I don't know if I ever told you this. Uh, I had a friend once tell me that I'm, I'm, I'm an, the nerd hero. And I'm like, what does that mean? They're like, well, you're really quiet and introverted, but you figured out a way to kind of like, just like 
function around people and like, and be, and, you know, be like just normal and like talk and like, and have, uh, you know, have this kind of a uh, presence. And, and I'm like, thank you. I think. And they're like, no, I meant it as a compliment because, cause naturally, and this is true. Like I'm much more reserved, um, than you are, for instance, like you're somebody who's really, you know, extroverted and you like your high eye on disc test. Mm -hmm. And so I want to encourage everybody here. You can be entertaining, um, you can, and it doesn't have to be fake, make it authentic. Right. But just let the, let those right. fun parts of you come out. Um, but also the other part, the other lesson I got here, man, was like really kind of spreading this as wide as you can. Now he has a large net because he's been doing it for a long time, but start somewhere, uh, whatever media outlet you choose. And, uh, he, he, it sounds like he suggested radio, which by the way, I was also surprised that he said, uh, that he, that he really, you know, radio is going so well, like, cause I was under the false impression, mm -hmm. I guess that radio is kind of dying, but he's, here's a guy, here's an expert who's in the industry. And if, if he's saying it's working for him, then that's awesome. And so it means it can work for other people as well. Um, but start to spread this message, start to get your personality out there. Um, I've seen this guy on billboards at the airport. I've seen him like all over the place. Um, and so that's another lesson. Like nobody nobody knows and we know this intuitively as business owners but unless the people know about you they're not going to do business with you right and one thing that he said on there that i kind of you know struck a chord with me was the fact that he said something along the lines of nobody's going to toot your horn as well as you do you know and and i think that's important because listen who are you going to find that's going to be telling you all kinds of great things? Well, your raving fans will actually talk great about you, but you got to be the one who's constantly putting yourself out there and sharing and be entertaining and things like that. And when you start doing that, all of a sudden your messages start to grow further and further. And the other thing that I've gotten from this particular episode is consistency. Um, we didn't really talk about this, but I mean, look, and he's been doing it for, what do you say? Radio, yeah, like 17 radio years, 17 years. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, talk about consistency. You got to be keep doing this because if it doesn't show up in the first, you know, week or first month, all of a sudden, most people give up. You got to keep moving forward because the people who are going to be successful are people who are going for the long haul. Well, dude, that's a phenomenal point because he that's even said, said it. well, you know, yeah, I, I'm glad I gave you the show notes to say that before we got on this episode here. So like, <laughs> sure. one thing that just struck me well, as dude. you were sharing is the fact that you said somebody once told me that, that you figure out how to function around people <laughs> that right there, my friend <laughs> says everything. Well, but listen, on a serious note, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I think what you said is important because he even admitted to, he's like, I was terrible when I first started and he, it took him a year and a half to hone his chops. So you might right now be thinking our listener, like, uh, man, I can't do that. I'm terrible. I, or I, I'm, I'm awful. Like, that's okay. Everybody's awful at everything when you first start it. And so start somewhere and over consistency over time, you will develop the skills. Um, and of course we haven't even addressed this in the, in the episode at all, but all of this, is the outward spreading of you, your brand, your message, what you do. And we're all, we're already assuming you provide a quality, valuable um, service to people, right? Like that's the, that's, the, that's going without being said, right? Like we understand that, like you can't be all hype. That's, that defeats the whole purpose. People are going to find out that you, that you're, you can't, but it's all steak, no sizzle. Um, you got to provide a real value here, but coach was right. Like there's, a, there's a, probably a bazillion, people out there that offer the same thing as you, like, what can you do to set yourself apart? And he has chosen humor entertainment and it's, it really works. Like it's, uh, looks like it's working well for him. So listen, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, I hope you found it entertaining and, uh, we I would did. love it if we would, if you would leave us a review, um, go on when you, when you're on your iPhone, you can click down to the bottom of the screen of, of our episodes and you can leave a, a rating, just click on that five star <laughs> if you want to. Um, and, uh, you leave us a review, tell your friends and family about it. Like we hope you, uh, are getting nuggets from here. Cause listen, yes, we want this to be entertaining, but we also want it to be educational. So you get both of those, right? Edutainment mm -hmm. is the term I've, I've heard used and I love that um so until next time um we will see you back here at the same time if you want to get in touch with us before that head on over to the life in our app you guys know we plug this every week it's free for iphone or for, or android or desktop go to lifeinner.com to learn more until then spread those wings let people know who you are let that inner fun that inner uh fun person come out and share that with the world and uh awesome things will come back to you we'll see you next time everyone